So some time ago, someone asked me to make a tutorial that demonstrated debris with physics. So say a crate exploded, a bunch of boards, planks, pieces of board would go flying and that they would actually bounce around. Turns out that there's actually a very simple built-in way to do this. You can use a particle system. Now you might not think of a particle system to use larger objects, but you can. So what we need here at the bottom, and don't mind some of the stuff, I was just doing some testing. Basically what we need is a plank. Now what's very important is that this is actually in a square. So as you can see this one, you don't see a border because the plank is um, the plank is the same size as the image. Whereas this one, you can actually see a square border because you've got all this blank space surrounding it. It makes a difference, and I'll explain why in a bit, but you do not want the plank to be, or whatever your debris is going to be, you don't want it to be form-fitted. You need it to be within a squarish object. So now let's go ahead and create our game object and create our particle system. Just move this towards the bottom. Now the second thing that we're going to need is a material. I already made one, but I'll create it again. So, so far down here, all we've used is this plank right here. So we'll go create, and we'll have material, and we'll call this debris material. Click on debris material, and you'll see that you have different settings here. We're going to use albedo at the top. So you can just drag and drop your square plank onto that. Now, this is important because certain settings will not work uh, with what we need to do. So choose shader, sprite, default. So you've taken your image you've created a material with that image now you have to apply that material to the particle system so scroll down to renderer and you see default particle here you can just go ahead and drag and drop that onto it so we're part way there you see boards shooting out from the uh, particle system now the reason why I said that it needs to be in a square is because one of the ways you can make an object elongated is by using render mode and choosing a stretched billboard. So we'll take a square and it'll make it elongated. Because what happens is if you use this, it turns this into a square. So even though this el is elongated, it turns this into a square and then you lose the rotation. So that's why you need your, your, your uh, image to be within a square. So it thinks it's displaying a square, whereas since the um, background is transparent, it doesn't look like it's a square. So that way you don't have to use stretched billboard. Next, what you want to do is you want to do rotation over a lifetime. As soon as I click on that, you see it's starting to spin around, so now we're getting closer. What we want to do is if you want a lot of spin, you just increase this number. So let's bump it all the way up to 360. Now that's starting to look like something, uh, particles, or should I say debris, with some decent force to it. Next thing, you want it to go up, but then you want it to come down. I believe this is something that wasn't in 4.6, since I don't use it anymore, I'm not certain, but this makes life really easy. You can just apply a gravity modifier. So one is a little bit too much, because as you can see, it comes down really quickly. But, gravity modifier goes hand in hand with speed. So if you increase the speed, so now it's just a matter of, okay, how high do you want the object to go before it comes back down? How fast do you want it to move? Again, if this is meant to be an explosion, you have gotta have some decent force going on. So it's gonna be a bit of trial and error to get where you want. Um, that's probably a little bit overdone. Let's try just 11. Okay. Now also, it's always, it's going way out to the left and right, so it depends how far around you want these boards to go. 
so you might want to change also um, the shape because I believe if you change the cone it will bring it in a little bit yeah it does so a lot of little things you're doing to make this work and a lot of it is relative to your project so it's kind of like sculpting so you can change this uh, which is the angle you're just doing it visually see how angle changed from 20 and change so you're uh, working with start speed you're working with angle you're working with uh, gravity modifier to get what you want now the last piece of the puzzle is you want collision you want to change this to world you want to change collision mode presuming you're doing 2d to 2d bounce is when it hits something it will as the name suggests bounce off this is actually really kind of excessive particularly if you're doing something like wood um, but again uh, this is going to be based on what is bouncing around is it bouncing on soft surfaces hard surfaces what looks right to you so we'll just drop that to point 0.4 I believe that's what I used when I was testing now the last thing is we need to create something for it to bounce also off of so we'll take the other plank because this isn't being used for the particle system itself we'll stretch it out and we will add physics 2d box collider I think that should be all that we need there we go now that looks like it's lasting a little bit long so again preference how long do you want those uh, boards to last so at this point that basically is everything you need but you can also tweak that so that would have to do with lifetime so that's about it so as I said one of the keys is that you need to have the image be within a square so even though you're trying to do a rectangle you need to have it within a square that way it displays like a rectangle because it takes this and it stretches it if you use a rectangle um, and that's about it the rest like I said is just balancing the lifetime versus the speed uh, versus the uh, gravity modifier um, make sure you do the collision and I barely you know, scratch the surface of this so there's a lot of things that you can do to make this look even better or different and then you probably could even mix this with um, I believe it's called sub emitters I'd have to look to see where that is but what uh, here we go sub emitters so what a sub emitter does is each individual particle results in an emitter it results in another particle system so what you could do is your sub emitter could maybe be um, an explosion so that when this hits it then explodes into dust so uh, that really I think would be a separate video because I'm I don't haven't done much with sub emitters recently so I don't want to uh, make a promise that I can't follow through with so there we go you now have um, debris that uh, has physics to it and of course if it's an explosion this would not be looping and in this case the duration is far shorter than the lifetime because you only want them to be generated for half a second but you want them to last for three seconds so this way you get a burst okay. and again that's just something you're balancing as far as uh, how how long do you want them to be emitted um, and um, you know the rate in which it's being emitted because you could just bump this up without changing that 
and suddenly you have more boards. So like I said, it's sculpting, you're balancing all these different elements to get just what you're looking for. So that should about do it.